Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in today's video we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows 11 in VirtualBox. I think this would be a good video to jump back with here since Windows 11 has been out for some time now, and part of the setup is a little bit tricky, but don't worry, we will get to that part here in the video uh, during the setup there. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So there will be links in the description for, of course, VirtualBox. Uh, you can download it here for your specified OS by using the links here. The current version at the time of this video is version 6.1.36. You can also download previous builds uh, if you choose, but for this, uh, it would be best to just have the latest version. Also can download the expansion pack or extension pack down here. And then the other link that will be in the description is a download link to Windows 11. And this is straight off of Microsoft's website. You can go down to the uh, option down here to download Windows 11 disk image ISO. It'll ask uh, the version, the only version here at this time is Windows 11 multi-edition. We'll hit that, hit download. It'll ask the language to pick. So pick your specified language, hit confirm, and then it will give you a uh, button here for the 64-bit download. You'll click on that and it will start downloading. Uh, choose your location to download that to and it will uh, go ahead and download that and save it to your computer there. I already have this downloaded, so I will skip this uh, portion here. But once you do have this finished downloading and also have VirtualBox finished downloading and installing as well, we'll go ahead and we'll open up and get into VirtualBox here. Um, the screens may look a little bit different here for you. Uh, I have machines on my side. You may not have any here, but regardless, up top here, we'll go ahead and hit uh, new to create a virtual machine here, a brand new one for this install. I'm going to go ahead and name this Windows 11. Down on the uh, version here, it should automatically select it to Windows 11 64-bit, but if it does not, uh, you'll want to hit the drop down, uh, scroll to the bottom, and there'll be that option for Windows 11 64-bit. You can choose to save it to a different location if you wish. I'm just gonna leave it at my location that I have it currently and hit next. It'll ask you how much RAM to dedicate to it. Uh, recommended it has it as four. I would recommend if you can or have the ability to, to try and dedicate at least eight to it. If you can't, um, then the four should work but uh, it would run a little better if you do have the eight gigs dedicated instead. And once you have that dedicated, hit next, and then we'll have the option here to create the new uh, virtual hard disk. Um, so we'll go ahead and leave it on the option to create a virtual hard disk now. Recommended size it has is 80 gigs. Uh, we will go ahead and leave it at that default once we get to that page. It'll ask the file type. You can pick any one of these. Normally I just keep it at VDI can use it as VHD if you want to use it on other virtual uh, platforms there. We'll hit next and you can do either fixed or dynamically allocated. I usually just do dynamically allocated so it doesn't take up all the 80 gigs on my drive, but you can do a fixed size if you would choose, but I'll leave dynam uh, dynamically allocated there. We'll hit next and we'll go to the portion here to choose the size of the disk. I'm going to leave it at the default of 80 gigs. You can assign more to it if you wish and have the capacity to. And then I'm just gonna leave it at that same location, basically that I'd chosen before here. You can save it elsewhere if you choose. Once you have the specified hard drive amount you'd like, go ahead and hit create, and that will create us our virtual machine. And it may pop up, up at the top for you, but for me, since I have other machines created, it goes to the bottom here. So I'm gonna drag that up so it's matched up here with my other Windows virtual machines here. And the next thing we'll wanna do here is go ahead and hit settings. And then we will want to hit storage. There'll be this empty disk here. This is where we'll insert our ISO file by hitting this little disk right here. And then um, mine is in this drop down here, but for most of you, uh, you'll want to hit this choose a disk file. You'll want to find where the ISO is located, uh, if it's in your downloads folder or if you had saved it somewhere else on your computer. And uh, select the specified ISO there and hit open and that will drop it into your uh, SATA controller here on the virtual storage devices. So the other thing you can do if you choose is you can go to uh, system here and go into processor and you can up the processors here. You can do uh, default, it's at two. Uh, of course, you wanna leave it at that at default. You can up it to four if you want, 
or eight. Uh, this really just depends on the amount of cores you have in your computer there. Uh, but the default is set to two, but I'm just gonna bump it up to four since I have the ability to. And then on display, that should also be set default to the max amount of 128 megabytes. Uh, so we'll leave that as is as well. So we'll hit okay to confirm all the changes that we had made in our settings. And then we'll go ahead and hit start to go ahead and start the virtual machine here. And we'll go ahead and load up the machine. And then we'll want to press any key to boot from the DVD there. And it will load up the setup here. So what I'm going to show you is what may happen for most of you, if not all of you in this case, actually. Um, during the setup, uh, you'll see what happens once we get through it here. So it'll ask us on this first setup screen to pick our language and keyboard format here. And we'll go ahead and hit next. And then we'll hit the install now option as we normally would in most Windows installs now. It'll have us on that setup a starting page here. And then it's gonna ask for a product key. Uh, normally for VMs, of course, you wouldn't enter one in here. Um, if you do have one and you want to enter it in here, you can. But for most of you, you'll wanna hit this, I don't have a product key message here. And then it does give you the option to select your version here. So just for the sake of this, we'll just hit pro, but you can do home education, pro, pro for workstations pro education, all that stuff. And then once we hit next, it's gonna come up with a message here that says that it can't run Windows 11 as it does not meet this minimum system requirements. Now, of course there are uh, minimum system requirements for this, but it is also going to do this uh, since it asks for a specific type of chip to run the uh, operating system. So to bypass this, what we will want to do is we will exit this setup here and then i'm actually going to go ahead and we'll do a reset we'll reboot the machine here and we'll load the setup window back up here on that so i'll take just a minute to load back up here and then once we're at this screen uh, what we'll want to do is on your keyboard here you'll want to hit uh, shift or hold shift and F10. It will bring up a command prompt window here. Um, and for this portion of the setup, also have the instructions in the description, uh, just in case for typing anything on here. If you can't see it, I will have it in the description for you uh, to follow along as well. Once we have the command prompt window open here, uh, we're going to go ahead and type in reg edit. That's R E G E D I T. And then we'll hit enter and that will open us to the registry editor here. In the registry editor, what we will wanna do is we'll want to locate the H key local machine directory here. We'll hit the arrow to get that down. And then we'll wanna go into the system uh, folder here next. And then down where we have setup, uh, we can go ahead and open that up. But what we we'll wanna do is right click on this setup folder here. We'll go ahead and hit uh, new to open this menu and then key. So I want to do a new key here and this folder, you're going to want to type in lab config. There we go. Got that typed in there lab config and then hit enter to confirm. It'll save that as the name of the folder and it should put us into that folder as well. So now that we're in there, um, we're going to, uh, create two new uh, values here. So we'll do a right click in this uh, white box, hover over new, and we'll go down to D word 32 bit value. And it'll create a new value. What we'll want to type in for this first one is bypass TPM check. And again, this will be in the description if you are unable to see it for any reason on the uh, video screen here. And then what we'll want to do is go ahead and modify it. We want to change the value data in here from zero to one. So I have one in as the value data and we'll hit okay. And that should change it in here. And then we want to go ahead and right click and then do another new D word 32 bit value. And for this one, we will want to call this bypass secure boot check with the capital letters as shown here too. And once that's created and we hit enter to confirm the name, 
we'll want to uh, go ahead and right click and do a modify. And then for the value data on this one, we will also change this from zero to one. And we will click okay to confirm that and it will change it in here. And that is all we need to do in the registry editor. So we can go ahead and close the registry editor here and also the command prompt window. And then we're back at the same screen with the setup of picking your language and keyboard format. So choose those as you need to. Go ahead and hit next. And we will hit install now. It will bring us back to that setup of starting screen here. And then the product key window comes back here. Again, most of you will hit this I don't have a product key when, uh, option down here. And then again, the specified options will come up to do either home education pro and so on and so forth. Again, I'm going to just do pro for the sake of this video. We'll hit next. And then now it should get us to the license terms agreement here. So we'll want to hit the checkbox to agree and accept the Microsoft software terms, uh, license terms here and hit next to continue. And then on this, you have the option to either do an upgrade or custom. Obviously we can't do an upgrade because there's no operating system installed. So we'll do custom and should bring you to where your hard drives are located here. And it should have your virtual hard drive that we had assigned to it uh, in here. I have the 80 gig one that I created. So we'll make sure of course that's highlighted and hit next. And then it will start going through the install process of installing Windows 11 onto the machine here. So go ahead and let this sit through and complete through the installs. Uh, it will reboot a couple times there for you as well. So again, it will take some time depending on the hardware you have in your computer. Uh, but I will go ahead and let this install and I will be back with you guys uh, once we uh, get through this portion and are on the uh, next setup screen there. All right, so it should bring you to this screen after the setup completes through, does its reboots and everything. It will play a chime before this too, but I just missed out on it. Um, so now since we are on this screen here, we wanna go ahead and specify the country or region located in, hit yes. And it will load us onto the keyboard layout screen choose yours as you need hit yes and if you need to add a second layout you can i will skip that since i do not need to it's going to check for updates here and as you see here looks like audio is showing up on the bottom so that should be working by default and there you could hear the chime there so that is working as normal uh, so it's going to keep checking for updates here definitely can take a little bit of time here so just let it sit here and do its thing after that is done it will hit to this screen here where it says just a moment and it will go ahead and load it once more there and then that should bring us to the next window of the setup screen here. So we'll go ahead and reboot next here again. And you can see it is loading uh, back into the OS on here with the screen. And so that now will take us into the next uh, setup screen here that we will continue on the setup with. So it will come up to this screen here that says updates are underway. So it'll install the latest updates uh, if it does find any here and then should bring you to the welcome screen next so eventually should come up to this screen here we'll, we'll ask you to name the device here so i'm just gonna name this uh windows 11 pc you can name it whatever you want we'll go ahead and hit next or you can skip it and then it will hit to this screen where it says just a moment and that will take us through on to the next portion. So the next screen it will have us come up to is asking if we want to use it for personal use or work or school. Uh, in this case, I will select personal use. Most of you will end up selecting as that anyway. So we'll hit next. And then it's going to have us ask for a uh, Microsoft account here. Now you actually can go into sign up options and, or sign in options and hit offline accounts uh, to skip this. Uh, so then we'll go ahead and hit skip for now. And then this is where it'll have us just create 
our normal user account in here. So I will go ahead and just enter my name in there and it will ask for a password. You can skip that by just hitting next or type in a password as you wish. And then we'll ask for the privacy settings on the device. We're just going to go ahead and leave all those enabled and hit accept. And then it's going to, again, uh, try and check for updates here. We'll go to another flat screen that says uh, just a moment. And now it will proceed us to the continuing setup here. So, um, so another time here, we'll, we'll have it let it sit and do its thing. It will finish with the installation process. And then once this is finished, uh, should bring us to the desktop. So it says it might take a few minutes here. So it'll go through this portion and then uh, we'll come back here once the desktop is appearing. So it should come up and had said almost there. And now we are presented with the desktop and that completes the install of Windows 11 in VirtualBox. You can certainly go in and install the guest editions if you would like to try and uh, make the screen bigger and uh, get this all taken care of. But uh, we now have the operating system installed. So um, that is all there is to it. Again, there's that little uh, step in the middle there that was a little bit of a confusing step possibly there, but that's really the only additional thing outside of a normal install for uh, Windows here that we ran into. But otherwise, that does complete the video here. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like down below. If you're not already subscribed, uh, certainly do so down below as well and hit the notification bell to be updated on future uploads and to be notified for those. Also comment down below if you guys have any ideas for any future videos and I can certainly look through those and see if I can complete any of them for you. So thank you guys so much for watching here and I will see you guys in the next video.